at the Bifort Dolphin Oil Rig, located on the North Sea of the coastal area of Norway, an accident claimed the lives of five people, particularly in a chilling way, on the 5th of November, 1983. The accident generated public outcry and led to more strict safety protocol for divers of very low depths. The incident now serves as a warning for deep sea divers who perform at very risky depths. Today on this video, I'll be covering the very tragic incident that happened on the Bifort Dolphin Oyuri, where a very simple mistake cost the life of almost 5 people. So if you're a fan of dark and strange stories, all I'm asking from you is to subscribe and hit the like button. Also leave a comment if you wish, so that YouTube can actually push this video to more people that are interested. Thank you as you do that and let's get into the story. Owners of the rig contracted four divers and two assistants, known as dive tenders, to perform underwater maintenance through saturation diving, a high risk task. An imbalance between the divers' pressurized living space and unpressurized dock resulted to an explosive decompression, leading to the death of all the divers and one dive tender. Surprisingly, the surviving dive tender made it alive but was severely injured. In addition to the implosion of the Titan submersible, the Bifort Dolphin tragedy is seen as one of the most tragic underwater misfortunes in history. While the two tragic events enjoy some similarities, they are actually different. The former involves compression, while the latter involves decompression. To narrate the error that happened, it is key to note the dangers associated with decompression illness on the human body saturation diving and the science behind what took place at the time of the incident. Undersea diving brings many tourists to water bodies where they can safely dive at relatively shallow depths, usually 100 feet or less, and actually for a short period. Highly skilled pro divers will go into more depths and for longer hours. This causes the worry of decompression sickness. The compression illness occurs when a diver attains high depths and returns to the top immediately. The process starts with an air tank. They contain the same mix of oxygen and nitrogen air on the surface, or in some instances, helium is added. While the body consumes oxygen, the nitrogen gathers and becomes extremely pressurized by the underwater setting. Normally, your body has some nitrogen, but during diving, the nitrogen is compressed. So the body fills the vacuum with extra nitrogen from the air tank. As divers proceed under sea, they experience higher degree of pressure, each measured as a unit atmosphere's amount of pressure. Thus, two atmospheres equal double the pressure on the surface of the earth, likewise three atmospheres is triple and so forth. At three atmospheres, the body of a diver carries thrice the normal amount of nitrogen. If they return to the surface very quickly, the nitrogen will immediately spread its normal size inside the diver's body and result to pain, difficult breathing, and in severe cases, death. This is the reason why divers must slowly come up so the nitrogen can safely expand and decompress. Decompressing at first before coming to the surface of the water may take hours or days because divers operating on a deep sea oil rig often need to go down and return back up at extreme pressure. They use a method called saturation diving. This uses a living space called a habitat, which is pressured to the same level as the water which the divers operate in. By this method, it is needless to decompress each time the divers return to the surface, because the gas in their bodies stay pressurized. Saturation diving is unpopular due to the stress it affects on the body and divers can only perform saturation diving for at most a few weeks. These pressurized facilities have an unpressurized docking area. When divers evacuate the habitats, they enter into a pressurized diving bell while being taken down into the water by dive tenders. When the divers are set to return, they come to the pressurized diving bell and the dive tenders at the dock pull it to the surface. The divers may take days or weeks under the same constant pressure. 
After the saturation elapses, they are swapped with new divers. Saturation diving is very risky. The crew must be professionals to guarantee everyone stays safe. On October 5th, 1983, Bjorn Bergesen and his colleague Helevik were coming back from a dive. Co-divers Edwin Coward and Roy Lucas were within the habitat. Two dive tenders, William Cramond and Martin Sanders, were controlling the diving bell for Helevik and Bergesen. The Byford Dolphin habitat was pressurized to about nine atmospheres to fit the underwater surrounding in which they worked as reported by the waterline stories. As the diver in the video narrated, it meant that everyone in the habitat had nine times the normal amount of nitrogen in their bodies. While Bergesen and Helvig moved from the diving bell, it became depressurized before Helvig could completely shut the habitat door. The divers moved from nine atmospheres of pressure to one immediately. The expanding nitrogen within their bodies had no means of escape and the release of such pressure immediately caused a bomb-like explosion. Three divers died as a result of the flash boiling of their blood. This means that the spreading nitrogen in the blood vessels changed into air bubbles. It is similar to bubbles coming out of a kettle of heated water. Helvig was forcefully removed by the escaping gas through a tiny space in the door he was attempting to shut. This mutilated his body and threw his appendages apart. Exploding from its position due to the escaping gas, the diving bell crushed the tenders. Surprisingly, Martin Saunders survived the incident, but the other members of the team died immediately. After the disaster, investigators reported that poor sealing on the diving bell earlier by William Cramond led to the tragedy. They stated that he wrongly depressurized the diving bell while it was still attached to the habitat and the doors between them were open. Nevertheless, the cause was later found to be a device malfunction in 2008, removing blame from Cramond. Also, the Bifor Dolphin oil rig used an extremely outdated diving system. Construction work on the oil rig ended in 1974, and by 1983, the rig was already out of date. However, the company continued using the obsolete mechanism. Recent regulations might have prevented the disaster if they had been followed, if you ask me. The accident also led to the creation of the pro group, North Sea Divers Alliance, a group of lobbyists committed to advocacy for safer working conditions for divers operating in the North Sea. The Bifort Dolphin oil rig continued functioning after the sad event, but as a result of the financial shortcomings of the owners, it closed in 2016. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, please share with your friends and all I ask is for you to like, subscribe and sit tight as I'll be bringing more for you guys. That being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.